Protecting forests, changing diet, and altering farming methods could be crucial to reducing greenhouse gas emissions and avoiding the worst impacts of climate change. However, changes aren't very likely to happen unless governments act on them. First up, the new IPCC report exposes the frightening state of the world. According to the UN Secretary General, the report serves as a dire warning about the consequences of inaction that indicate the grave and mounting threat of climate change to the well-being of all species of Earth. In the first part of the IPCC's sixth assessment, the authors explored the connection between human activity and climate change. Referring to it as unequivocal, they stated that global temperatures had risen by 1.1 degrees since the 19th century. Now, that may not seem like much, but in terms of global temperature, that's a lot. The new publication by the IPCC looks at the impacts, adaptation, and vulnerabilities surrounding climate change. It states that reducing climate warming greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide and methane is critical to maintaining the health of species and ecosystems on our planet. This particular report places an increased emphasis on incorporating indigenous knowledge. While also addressing the injustices of how climate change often disproportionately affects the world's poor. Our planet has been taking way too many hits over the past couple of years, and some of the wounds it has sustained are starting to become untreatable. They are becoming too deep, too catastrophic to heal. It is our duty as inhabitants of the planet to soften these blows by cutting greenhouse emissions, while also picking up our efforts to adapt to the changing environment. Now, let's dive into the looming threat of climate change. According to the UN's latest reports, many of the impacts of global warming are now entirely irreversible. Authors of a new report, however, state that there might still be a small window of time to avoid the absolute worst. The IPC states that human life and nature have recently started to be pushed beyond their abilities to adapt because of rapidly changing climatic conditions. Additionally, they have found that over 40% of the global population is highly vulnerable to climate. Extreme weather events linked to climate change like floods, heat waves, and droughts are hitting humans and other species much harder than they have been predicted. Expectedly, some populations are being hit much harder than others. Between 2010 and 2020, 15 times more people died from floods, droughts, and storms in vulnerable regions of the world like Africa, Central and South America, and South Asia. We are starting to see more and more dramatic impacts because of the current level of warming. Coral reefs are bleaching and dying, and trees are succumbing to drought. An accelerating rise in sea levels is starting to hit coastal settlements, pushing them towards submergence and loss. And the human population is being exposed to periods of life-threatening climatic conditions as a result of rising heat and humidity. Health is also starting to become a growing concern. Diseases are expected to spread more quickly in the coming years. Mosquito-borne disease in particular could potentially rise to billions more by the end of the century. Let's not forget the warming threat to species. While around 14% of species assessed by an IPC report are expected to face a pretty high risk of extinction if the planet warms by 1.5 degrees, this number could go up to 29% at 3 degrees of warming. For species residing in locations that are classified as vulnerable biodiversity hotspots, they are already at a high risk of extinction. That risk is expected to double as warming moves towards the second degree mark, and and increased tenfold at 3 degrees. An overview of how food and forestry affect global warming. Approximately 22% of global greenhouse gas emissions come from agriculture, forestry, and other land use sectors. Around half of this comes from deforestation, while much of the rest comes from burning off fossil fuels. So what are some of the potential mitigation measures that can be adopted in those sectors? Protecting forests from clear cutting, isolating carbon in agricultural soil, and adopting more sustainable diets are all measures that could reduce emissions by almost 20 to 30%. They are exactly what we need to limit global warming warming to 1.5 or 2 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. Next, agriculture, food, and global warming. While agriculture is affected by climate change, it also significantly contributes to climate change. With increasing demands and competition for resources, food production and consumption need to be viewed in a larger context, linking agriculture to energy and food security. Before we go to the store and purchase food, it is produced, stored, processed, packaged, transported, prepared, and served. Every one of these stages leaves behind a carbon footprint because each one releases greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. Farming particularly releases a ton of nitrous oxide and methane, two of the strongest greenhouse gases. In 2012, agricultural accounted for a large portion of total greenhouse gas emissions because of a rise in total agricultural output driven by increased demand for food and changes in food consumption patterns as a result of rising incomes in developing countries. Considering the fundamentality of foods in our lives, a reduction of greenhouse gas emissions from agriculture isn't the easiest thing to accomplish. However, there is still room for some improvement. The introduction of innovative techniques into production methods for example, capturing methane from manure, increasing efficiency in dairy and meat production, and using fertilizers more efficiently can help significantly. Changes in the consumption side of things can also help. Meat and dairy products typically leave behind the highest global carbon footprint, with livestock and fodder production generating over 3 billion tons of CO2 equivalent. Therefore, reducing food waste and our consumption of these emission-intensive products would contribute a great deal to the cutting down of greenhouse gas emissions from agriculture. Up next, forestry and global warming. Everyone knows that forests play a crucial 
role in stabilizing the climate. Not only do they regulate ecosystems and protect biodiversity, but they are also an important part of the carbon cycle and the production of goods and services that drive sustainable growth. Like agriculture, forests can act as a cause and solution for greenhouse gas emission. Over 25% of emission come from the land sector. This makes it the second largest source of emissions, after the energy sector. More than half of these emissions came from forest degradation and deforestation. Additionally, around 2.6 billion tons of CO2 are absorbed by forests annually, which shows the integral part that they play in controlling the climate. So what can be done in terms of forestry to build our planet's resilience to climate change? First off, we need to combat deforestation and forest degradation, especially in areas of high biodiversity and cultural importance. Forests need to be conserved to simultaneously conserve the benefit that people and other species get from them. The restoration of forest landscapes is another crucial step that could help mitigate climate change. Enabling rights-based land use in the sector would also be a useful step. This would ensure community involvement in land use outcomes and strengthen community control over forested land. This, in turn, would alleviate poverty, enhance biodiversity, and sustainably manage forests. A forest is a lot more than just its trees. It is the animals that spread flora and fauna, the bacteria that fix nitrogen in the soil, and the various types of fungi that digest dying leaves. You need this entire community to create an ecosystem that curbs excessive climate change. At the same time, however, scientists also urge people to practice caution when expanding forests. While trees do cool down the planet by taking up carbon, they also emit a plethora of chemicals, some of which contribute to global warming. The dark leaves of trees, which absorb sunlight, have also been found to contribute to rising temperatures to an extent. Of course, no one is denying the fact that trees are good for the environment, and no one is encouraging people to cut down existing forests or decrease efforts to combat deforestation. However, scientists do warn against extreme reliance on forests as an end-all solution to global warming, at least until they can come up with a better understanding of their long-term effects. So what's stopping these sectors? Transformations in food, forestry, and agriculture would not cost a lot to implement, but there is very little momentum so far to trigger any sort of change in these sectors. There appears to be a clear lack of financial and institutional support, uncertainty over how land is managed in the long term, and the extremely dispersed nature of private land holdings. Another major obstacle is dictating diets, which are a personal choice, and dictating them could be divisive, to say the least. The IPCC panel's initial report asked consumers to shift to plant-based diets. They wanted them to reduce their intake of meat, but the final version was changed to call for sustainably produced animal products instead. If meat is produced sustainably, it could be low-carbon, supporting soil carbon and nutrients. But it comes at a time when global demand for livestock is growing exponentially. This could be a major problem in cutting agricultural emissions. Well, that's all we have for you guys today. Have you read the latest IPCC report? Where do you think our focus needs to lie in when dealing with climate change? Let us know all your thoughts in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. See you next time. Bye!